Lab. In the shop today, I have a Fender Frontman 212R combo amp. Came into the shop dead. So let's give it the Mr. Obvious treatment, see if we can find the cause, get her fixed up. Here we go. Since it's dead, the first thing I do is take my meter in the ohms position, put it across the line input, and toggle that power switch. You see, open circuit. So the next step, see if the fuse is blown. Let's check that. So right down there is the fuse. Okay, get our meter in there. Try not to block your view. Going from there to there. Fuse is good. So we have something else causing an open circuit. Hopefully it's not the primary or the power transformer. As you know, the first thing I do is check the board for obvious loose connections, arcing, etc. Save myself a lot of troubleshooting time. So I've already taken the leads loose from the power transformer and these two black ones are the primary and they go down here to these little spade connectors on the board. Well I checked those to see if they're tight but then I noticed right here they called RT1. This is one of those little thermistors that change with heat so it gives a soft startup for power application to the transformer. Well look at this thing. It's rocking and if you look really close lead right there there's some brown residue it's been arcing so it is causing our open circuit let's see if we can see that with the ohmmeter all right so I'm gonna rock this little RT1 as they call it and let's watch the meter so I'm rocking it you can see some fluctuations right there see how she's kind of trying to make connection yeah there she goes so that's her culprit so I'm going to have to pull the board out and solder that. Now the other thing I noticed, I went down here a ways, and you always got these big old power resistors, and they're always a culprit, right, for bad connections. These two are okay. But I came over here. R145 looks okay. Watch R144. He is looser than a goose. And I reached under the board, and I can feel the lead of that resistor. And as I'm doing this, I can feel it rocking. So that guy needs to be soldered too. Time to pull the circuit board, solder it up. Here's a big old circus board. We'll be pulling that loose to repair the bad solder connections. And of course, to do that, you gotta take off all these nuts. All the knobs, there's nuts behind those. These nuts over here. There's screws here and here and several other locations that hold the circuit board in and then here is the heat sink assembly and there's screws that come in from the bottom so it's quite the job I'll spend more time tearing this thing down and putting it back together than actually doing the repair alright the board is loose it's not too bad to get out of here it just clears the power transformer so we'll get this guy swung out here where I can take a look at the bottom and get those connections fixed. So right here is the main culprit. That was that little thermistor I was showing you. You can see it moving around there. Okay. Unfortunately, the foil is damaged. So what I'm going to have to do is sand this back and put in some wire to strengthen the connection. Then we'll go over the board and fix up anything else I spot. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that thermistor out of there so I can clean the board up. You can see here the arcing on this lead. So we're going to have to clean this up too. I'm going to repair this foil and we'll solder it back in. So I'll just start off by taking some solder wick clear these holes. You can see this one's in good shape but this one is very bad off. You can see the foil just fell right off when I tried to wick it. So there's not enough copper here to make a good connection. So let's sand back some of this coating 
and then we'll fold the lead over onto it and we'll get a good connection. So you can clean this two ways. You could take some sandpaper if you want, like some fine emery, or I always just take an X-Acto knife and you can see how nicely it removes that coating. Now see the copper, it's loose. Okay, so we're going to go back here a ways. I'm going to show you a little trick to making a very secure connection on a bad foil. Alright, here we go. So same deal on the thermistor. I'm going to clean off that carbon. Get her nice and shiny so that I can get a good connection when we're all done. Alright, so here we go. Thermistor is back in his location. So this lead we know is good. We'll just go ahead and solder him back on. This lead, however, we do something a little bit different. I'm going to take a piece of solid conductor wire. I made a J hook. I'm going to put him there. Try not to block what I'm doing. I'm actually going to crimp him around the other lead to make a good mechanical connection. All right. Then we're going to take this and kind of form it to match up with the foil. All right. You see how I got the lead going all the way over? We're going to leave him like that and bend him over just like that. Okay. Get the old slobbering iron. I'll go over here and I'm going to tack solder him in place. That didn't work out too good, did it? Let's try it again. That'll stop it from moving. Now we're going to solder this to that wire and we're going to flow the solder onto that foil. That is as solid as you can get for a damaged foil. So let's give it an inspection through my magnifying glass light. Okay. So you can see the solder flowed well around the lead. It's laying nicely against the foil. And it's also supported by these two connections over here. So that is as good as new, maybe even better. And of course we got the original connection here, which has been resoldered. So next I'll go over the rest of the board and then we'll reassemble it. Repair is complete, but before I totally reinstall the circuit board, this is a really good opportunity to give the front panel a cleaning. Because all the knobs, nuts, and all that are out of your way. So it was give her a good wipe down. Customers always like to get an amp back that's clean. One quick note on reassembly. Always start with the nuts on these controls and jacks first. Okay, Get them on there and get them snug before you put these screws in on the board. Because if you get that out of order and one of these aren't seated properly, you can actually break a potentiometer. So use caution. So here we go. Initial power up after the repair. I have a test speaker hooked up, audio generator, and of course it's plugged in. So let's see what happens. Got a power light. And we got some audio. That's a good thing. I don't have the reverb hooked up right now because it's still in the cabinet. I'm going to clean the controls, give her a little burn in time, but it looks like we have another success. So I saved another solid state amp. This one here went through the shop in record time. I picked it up today. It's going back to the owner tomorrow. So this is a two hour task. But as you could see, the actual repair was like five minutes of that. The rest is just getting them apart and putting them back together. But that's what you go through when you work on these solid state amplifiers because they're circuit board based. It's not like the good old amps where you can go in there and pop those parts off the top. You got to go in from the bottom. So it takes more time. Either way, it was a good repair, very straightforward, and I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. We'll see you again on Solid State Cinema.